Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today, this is your last, last 16 Africa Cup of Nations daily recap, we've completed the last 16, now we're going to go through the two matches of the day and see how that all went down, Ivory Coast versus Egypt, heavyweight clash, that's a clash you expect in the final, and also Mali versus Equatorial Guinea, going to be a very interesting one, before we get into it, I do want to let you guys know, remember to check out earlier on uh, video, the, vi well, the video from earlier on, uh, about Chelsea and the uh, situation with some unhappy attackers, make sure you check that out, and also the video before that where I gave you guys the unboxing of my 100k silver play button. So make sure you check those out. Let's get into the first game. We're going to do this in order of how it went down. So the first game of the day, Ivory Coast versus Egypt. And this game finished nil-nil. Um, well, funnily enough, we didn't get any goals today despite two matches. So that's a, that's a fun fact. And also no red cards. What a surprise. Anyway. Ivory Coast versus Egypt, this was quite cagey, this was a cagey affair, very 50-50 match, uh, very end-to-end, -end. at the same time both teams trying to be cautious and at times defensive, but there were opportunities for both, I think it was split very very evenly throughout the game, from minute one, until minute 90, there wasn't a case of one team dominating more than the other. Um, and that was the story of the game, pretty much. Overall, um, it was just quite a basic affair. Nothing major to report, nothing insane that went down. Um, obviously, Ivory Coast, I knew going into this, were a team to, to look at and take seriously because of the way that they were developing. Egypt, I didn't think, would be able to hold Ivory Coast 90 minutes. I knew that maybe the first half, it might be like this, nil-nil, but then I, I expected Ivory Coast to score at some point. They didn't. They didn't. Even afterwards, where Egypt's goalkeeper um, got injured and they had to replace him, was when um, that was... When I began to think, okay, Ivory Coast might score now because that goalkeeper for Egypt is absolutely fantastic. El Shanawi, that's uh, the goalkeeper of Egypt. Um, and then he came off, obviously, with a uh, little injury. But I thought with him in goal, it'll be difficult. With him out of goal, I reckon that Ivory Coast might score. And they didn't. They didn't. Despite me thinking that they were going to get closer and closer, even though they had a couple of chances, nothing really happened. Even in terms of the other end, I know most people will be looking at Egypt and thinking, yeah, Mo Salah. Mo Salah's going to be the one to, 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 to score, to, to go past the Ivory Coast defence. He'll, he'll be the one to save Egypt. Not even that happened. Mo Salah as an individual, his performances throughout the Africa Cup of Nations has been a little bit... I don't want to say underwhelming, but it's not been blockbuster. He's just done, you know, the bare minimum that's required to see his team through. Uh, but going into the latter stages of the competition now, we'll see how he performs. I'm looking forward to it. But this went all the way to penalties. Penalty shootout. And I have something to say about this penalty shootout. I really do. Because it started off, it started off quite... Uh, quite well in terms of Egypt and for Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast taking the first one, Nicolas Pepe scoring, Zizou scoring the second one, Sangare scoring for the Ivory Coast, um, Al Sulaya scoring for, uh, for Egypt. And then this is where it went mad. Eric Bailly of Man United steps up. He misses, right? Anyone can miss. But when you go and look at the replay, now I don't know if it's just me, Right? Have I misinterpreted it? Or am I seeing it the way that I'm seeing it? I want to ask you guys. Did Eric Bay try to do a no-look penalty? You know where you take a penalty and then you look the other way. You know, you try to hit it without looking. D did he do that? Because from the replay, it looked like he did. If he done that, I want to point this out. If he's done a no-look penalty... At an Africa Cup of Nations last 16 penalty shootout with his country on the line, he's insane. <laughs> he's insane. Who would do that? Who would do that? Obviously, you can go and look at the replay yourself. You can go and judge and see exactly how you want to interpret it. Maybe he just tried to turn on his body, but but the way you, the way he the way it looks, it looks like he actually is he's about to hit the ball and he tries to you know, do that in a little cheeky way, that's insane, if that was his intention, if that is what happened, he's mad, he's actually mad, 
He's actually mad. And Ralph Ragnick needs to be careful <laughs> back at Manchester United. Um, but Eric Bailly misses. And from that point onwards, that was it. Egypt scored, Ivory Coast scored, Egypt scored, Ivory Coast having to score, Wilfred Zaha, good penalty, and then at the end, Mr. Mo Salah steps up with a very good penalty into right into the right-hand side bottom corner. Egypt go through, commiserations to the Ivory Coast. At the end of the day, I thought that they would be the ones going through. They are not. So fair play to Egypt. Um, uh, Egypt now you have to take seriously. Now we're in the quarterfinals. It's going to be a very interesting quarterfinal clash, by the way. Morocco versus Egypt. That's going to be that's going to be tasty. I'll let you guys know the entire quarterfinal list and the way it's going to go down at the end of the video. Uh, moving on to the next game of the day, the final game of the day, Mali versus Equatorial Guinea, and I have to say, I like Mali a lot. Right, I like Mali. Um, I like the way that they conduct themselves. I like the way that their fans conduct themselves. Um, they're very respect respectful people overall. Um, but you know, you always want the underdog to do well. <laughs> I was looking at Equatorial Guinea, and I was just like, if they can just somehow make it through, that would be historic. Equatorial Guinea in the quarterfinal of the Africa Cup of Nations, and lo and behold, it has happened. Equatorial Guinea are through to the quarterfinals of the Africa Cup of Nations for the very first time, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think the only uh, the only other time they qualified for this competition was in 2012 when they hosted it or they co-hosted it. So, unbelievable. They now find themselves in the quarterfinals. And I think now some people can put respect on Equatorial Guinea's name. Despite today's game, where just like the first game, Ivory Coast Egypt, nil-nil, um, very cagey, except this one, I would say Mali had a little bit more of a stronghold on the game, especially in terms of chances created. They just couldn't score. They just couldn't score. And Equatorial Guinea kept their shape. Their tactics worked. They didn't really go up as much as, as they should have. But for the amount of times they did, they almost managed to get a goal. And again, I want to stress about um, Equatorial Guinea. This player got on my nerves in the group stage. I remember when Equatorial Guinea uh, beat Algeria and I was looking at this one player, Salvador Edu. Salvador Edu. Oh man, he's as I said, he's got he's got that that uh, attitude where you know on the pitch he just he falls over, he begs for the ref, he tries to do all sorts of antics, but on the ball he's such a baller, man. He's such a baller, and um, yeah, I, I'm keeping my eye on him because I think he's gonna get scouted. I really do. So we'll see what happens. But once again, he played very very well. Equatorial Guinea holding their shape, keeping Mali at bay. And it finishes nil-nil. Nothing really to report in the game itself. But it goes to penalties, just like the first game. And this one, in terms of a penalty shootout, was a little bit more entertaining. Because Equatorial Guinea missed their very first penalty. And you know what they say with penalties. Sometimes it's good to miss early. Because if the other team misses halfway through or close to the end, the momentum can shift. And if the momentum shifts and switches psychologically that could give you an edge and I felt like that is almost what happened when Equatorial Guinea missed up until the third penalty that was when Mali missed and then the shift happened 2-2 3-2 to uh, Equatorial Guinea Mali missing again and you're thinking that's it if Equatorial Guinea score it's over lo and behold Pablo Ganet steps up misses <laughs> He misses and El Bilal Torre gets them back in it. And then from that point all the way to sudden death up until the eighth penalty. Equatorial Guinea score it. Um, Santiago Eneme scoring. And then Falaye Sacco for Mali misses. Uh, well, good save at the end of the day. It was a good save. I don't think it was a bad penalty. There was a couple of penalties that went flipping out of the stadium. But that last one was just a good save by the goalkeeper. So, fair play. Um, unlucky to Mali. Mali exit at the last 16 stage. Equatorial Guinea are in the quarterfinals. And if we look to the last 16 now, and who's playing who, we have on the 29th of January, Gambia take on the hosts, Cameroon. Uh, so that's going to be interesting for Gambia. It's their first time ever in the quarterfinals. So we've got to watch out and see what they do against Cameroon. 
The second game, Burkina Faso against Tunisia. That's going to be an interesting clash. And I don't think it's going to be as easy for Tunisia as they think it might be. I'm just saying that now. But Tunisia are the favourites in that. We'll see what happens. 30th of January, Egypt versus Morocco. That's going to be... That's that's a clash. That's a clash. And I, I can't put my money on who's going to win that. If, if This is the thing. When, when I look at it, I think Morocco. But at the same time... Egypt, they can they can claw out results, just like today against the Ivory Coast. So we'll wait and see. And the last one, Senegal versus Equatorial Guinea. And I want to warn Senegal because this is another team that I like a lot. I like their people. I think they're fantastic. Do not underestimate Equatorial Guinea. Take it from someone from a country that had to pay the price <laughs> against Equatorial Guinea. Do not underestimate them. And best of luck to everybody. But the last eight are here. We'll see who's going to advance to the semi-finals. As I've said, that takes place on the 29th and the 30th. So we still got three days to go up until that happens. So no more AFCON videos up until the 29th. So there we are. That's your quarterfinals. Thank you all so much for watching. Commiserations to uh, Ivory Coast, La Côte d'Ivoire and Mali, of course. And congratulations to Egypt, Masar, and also Equatorial Guinea. Fantastic. Um, amazing achievement for Equatorial Guinea, and I'm very happy for them. Um, so there you are. Thank you all so much. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you've enjoyed this, and I will see all of you tomorrow for some new content. I'll see you then. Have a good one, people. In a bit, take care. Oh, peace.